anytime you go to a meet, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about, oh, are my block settings optimal? Because if you base it off your leg length, you're basing it off of the geometry of your body, and that's gonna set you up to be more effective when you try to clear the blocks. What's up everybody? Cody Bidlow of springworkouts.com and AthleteX coming at you with another video. Today I wanted to talk about how you can use your leg length to determine your block setup. Because I find that when we go by shoe length, it tends to be pretty inconsistent whether or not the distances that you get on your block spacings are right. Because just because you have a certain foot length doesn't mean that that's going to be, you know, appropriate as far as a measurement. I think a better way to go about setting up your blocks is to measure your leg length, similar to how we measured our leg length to figure out what our maximum stride length is gonna be so we can set up our wickets or you know, look at our stride length um, and try to see if we're in a good range or not. We can use leg length to determine our block spacings and end up in a position that is much more you know, anatomically advantageous rather than simply relying on the length of our feet to measure. Typically when you measure blocks or when you're first doing blocks, you'll set them up with two foot lengths to the first block, three foot lengths to the second block. Now I think that's fine for most novice athletes, but at a certain point in time, you know, you wanna start looking at how can I find a little bit of an edge here in my block start? How can I have a slightly more optimal position? How can I, you know, optimize my technique, all that stuff. So if we wanna get the best start that we can, we need to be in the best position. Now the best position should allow us to do a few things. One, be relatively stable. We don't wanna feel unbalanced because if you're unbalanced, you might not be able to produce as much force. Similar to how if you do an unbalanced exercise in the gym, you're not gonna be as forceful compared to if you do something that's like a, you know, a bilateral hex bar deadlift or something. The more stable your positioning and your setup, the more force you're able to apply. Second of all, I personally believe, this is an opinion, but uh, I personally believe that the front leg should be a little bit more loaded so that way you can push on the block for a little bit longer create a larger propulsive impulse and get a more forceful more aggressive start that launches you out and uses that first push as much as you can because you know when we're in the blocks it's the only opportunity we have to push against something that's relatively horizontal to use a lot of force because once you're sprinting, you gotta get moving. Your stride frequency is gonna pick up, you're not on the ground very long. So the block start is really the one opportunity we have to be super forceful in the whole sprint. So to, to be as forceful as possible and to use our force production to our advantage, I believe we should have the front leg a little bit more loaded in the blocks, meaning it should be a little bit closer than that two foot length that we typically see. In contrast, the back leg, I tend to feel more comfortable when I have a little bit bigger split in my blocks. I tend to see that my athletes start a little bit better when they have a bigger split between the two blocks. So, you know, if we use our leg length to determine how we're gonna set up our blocks, I think we're gonna be in a better, a better setup to be forceful, to have the proper split between our blocks, and it's gonna set you up to be more effective with pushing out when the gun goes off. So. Going back to what we talked about in the previous video, the first thing we need to do is measure our leg length. Now, you can do that pretty simply. Uh, you know, you can pick up a tape measure on Amazon for probably, I don't know, 10 bucks, 20 bucks or something like that. And we want to use it to measure our leg length. We're gonna measure our trochanter length like we did in the last video. You have a bumpy spot on the side of your thigh, not up here by your hip bone, but below your hip bone, there's a, a bump a bony bump on the side of your thigh. That's your greater trochanter. So to measure your leg length, you're gonna find that spot. Then you're gonna take your shoes off, stand barefoot on the track, and measure what that length is. So with your shoes off, take the tape measure, put it on the ground, and we're gonna see where is the greater trochanter. So for me, that's right here. So let's see, what is that? That's about 92 centimeters. So once you have your leg length figured out, then we're gonna do a calculation, very simple calculation, just multiplication. And that's gonna give us the distance to the front block, and then the second calculation will give you the distance between the two blocks. So in my case, we're gonna take 0.56 and multiply that by our trochanter length. So for me, 92 centimeters times 0.56 gives me 0.515 meters to the first block, or 51 and a half centimeters. 
So once again, to get your first block set up, we're gonna go 0.56 times your trochanter length, which for me is 92 centimeters. So I have 51 and a half centimeters to the first block. To get the distance between the two blocks, so the distance from the front block to the second block, or the from between the pedals, I should say, that's gonna be 0.42 times your trochanter length. So for me, that's 0.4 or 40 centimeters. So once you have that, then we can go about setting up your blocks in practice using the tape measure to figure out what that setting is. All right, so I've got the tape measure out. I've measured 51 and a half centimeters to the front or the edge of the line. Set up my block so that the first one is right there. Obviously you could just move the pedals, but right now I'm just gonna move the blocks to get it right. So we got the blocks pretty straight in the line or in the lane. We got 51 and a half centimeters right here. Now we're gonna measure between the two blocks, which once again is gonna be 40 centimeters. So from this pedal to the front of this pedal, we have 40 centimeters right here. So now I have my blocks set up based on my trochanter length. So now we're gonna test it out, see how it feels, and see if we need to make any adjustments. All right, so I've got my spikes on. I got my blocks set up where they're supposed to be based on my leg length. So I'm gonna get in there, test the set position, and see how it feels. So as you can see from this position, like I said before, my front leg is pretty loaded, right? I'm, I'm pretty much as bunched with my front leg as I can be. But my back leg does not feel bunched. And the fact that the front one is pretty loaded, but the back one is a little bit further back than that normal, you know, three foot lengths that we would go to. Right now, this is about three foot lengths and maybe a finger or two. It's gonna give me the split that I need to feel comfortable while still being in a, in a position where I'm as close to the line as possible. I have good geometry with all my joints and I'm able to launch out effectively. If the back block was too close, I would feel unstable and bunched and I wouldn't come out very explosively. But because I'm bunched in the front leg, that gives me the ability to really push off this block. And then the back leg is a little bit more spread out than it would typically be. That's gonna give me the balance that I need to feel comfortable while still being bunched and close up with this front block. So we'll test out the set position. Now from there, I feel pressure in the front hip. I feel like I'm loaded and I'm able to explode out and it's gonna be pretty easy to launch out when the gun goes off. Now there are some adjustments that you can make. For example, if you feel too bunched in the front one, you can push it back maybe one setting. If you're not, if you don't feel loaded enough, you could move it up one setting. But I would, I would for a while, I would just test out with the settings based on your leg length test it out give it a few trial runs do a few block starts see if it's comfortable if you feel too bunched too unbalanced like you're gonna fall over the line then we can move this one back if you still feel off then move the other one back a little bit further now I believe that we should keep the pedals all the way down because that's gonna allow us to push at an angle that is gonna be something close to that you know 40 to 50 degree angle we want to push out at if the pedals are up too high and you're not super, super strong and explosive and really fast, it's gonna push you out, you're gonna feel like you're gonna stumble and you're gonna pop straight up. So sometimes people wanna fire out super low, so they think, oh, I wanna make it like this so I can push out super low, but they end up popping up because their brain senses they're gonna fall over and they pop straight up or they lean too much, their torso's too forward, their center of mass is out in front of them and their foot's gonna swing out and crash into the ground because your foot's gonna go pretty much to where your center of mass is. So I think for most athletes, I would start all the way down, maybe go one up on the front one, maybe go one up on the back one, but I would keep them all the way down at about a 45 degree angle because that's gonna be what's gonna be easiest to push off of for most athletes. Now, obviously, you're not always gonna have a tape measure with you at a track meet, so I think it's important that once you have the basic block setting set up based on your leg length and you've manipulated it a little bit, you wanna measure with your shoes, the shoes or the spikes that you're gonna compete in, you wanna measure, once you have, you know, for me, 51 and a half centimeters and then 40 centimeters, you wanna measure with your shoes 
what that distance is to the blocks. So if you're at a meet and you don't have a tape measure, you're able to then use your shoes to get the same measurement that you did with the tape measure. So I've measured and set up my blocks with the tape measure. Now I'm gonna look and see what distance is it using my shoes. So I'm gonna put my heel at the line, then I'm gonna step forward and measure. So right now, I'm about one foot and then to the ball of my foot, maybe the front of the laces or a little bit more, maybe the front of my laces and a finger. That is the distance for my first block if I'm measuring by my shoes. You can see that the ball of my foot is right about at the front of the block. So one spike length, one foot length, and then to the ball of my foot brings me to my first block. So as you can see, that's a little bit shorter than the distance would be if I went putting this block at where the end of my second step was. Now let's, now let's do the other one. One, two, three, and then I've got about three fingers between my third foot length and the block, maybe two and a half. So now if I go to a track meet, I know, okay, I'm gonna go one shoe length, and then I'm gonna go another shoe length to the ball of my foot on that second foot, and that's gonna give me the spacing to my front block so I won't need a tape measure when I'm at the meet. And then for my second uh, block, I'm gonna go three foot lengths plus two to three fingers, and that'll give me the back block. Now, depending on the angles and the pedals and the type of blocks that you have at a meet, you might have to adjust a little bit because if the pedal isn't exactly the same size or exactly the same shape, like this one's a little curved, some are really flat, you might have to adjust, you know, maybe one setting or move it back a finger length or something like that. But this will give you, it'll put you in the right range so then you can find the exact perfect spacings. And as you can see, this is slightly different than if we were to just do two feet to the first one, three feet to the second one. In this case, when we measure by trochanter length or leg length, it gives us a slightly shorter front block, which is gonna give us that nice loaded front leg to push off of, and then a slightly more extended back block which is gonna give you that stability you need. And it's also going to add a little bit more length to the hip flexors so that they're in a position to fire right when the gun goes off. I believe that if the back leg is a little bit more lengthened and your, your psoas, your hip flexors are a little more lengthened, they're gonna be in a better position to shorten. Whereas if this back block is closer, not only are you gonna feel less stable because you don't have that, that distance between the pedals to make you feel stable, but it's also you know, going to, to put you in a position to where your hip flexors are gonna be slightly shortened. And if you're already in a pre-shortened position, it's harder to shorten a muscle from there, right? If I'm here, I can only go to there. But if I'm here, I, I can immediately launch, you know, I can, from this fully stretched out position, especially when you're in kind of a, a loaded position where your muscles are all firing and ready to go, it's gonna be easier to launch that leg through to flex the hip because it's already pre-stretched. So I'm not saying that it's a stretch shortening cycle action because you're starting from a, a static position, but I do believe there's something to be said for having the hip flexors lengthened so that they're in a perfect position to shorten when the gun goes off. Rather than being halfway through the range of motion or you know a third of the way through the range of motion of hip flexion from the start. I think if we have that lengthened back leg, the really loaded front leg, that's gonna give us the ability to launch out at a good angle. It's gonna give us a nice powerful start because we're able to push into this block for a long period of time. We're gonna create a larger propulsive impulse because force multiplied by time is impulse. So if we produce the same amount of force, but we apply that force to the front block over a longer time because we have a bigger range of motion to go through because that front leg is really loaded, then that's gonna give us a bigger propulsive impulse we're gonna leave the blocks at a higher velocity and that's gonna be good. It doesn't mean we try to reach and try to go really long on that first step because immediately once your foot comes off this block, you should be switching and starting the next stride, but you're gonna be leaving the blocks at a higher velocity. You may not step further, but you'll get there sooner. And if we can get to that first step sooner, get to you know one meter in a shorter period of time, shorten our block, uh, not necessarily our block clearance time, but increase the velocity at which we exit the blocks, then that's gonna be a good thing for our start. So I think all in all, if we measure our block settings this way, use our leg length, line it up with a tape measure, 
and then remember what that distance is based on your shoes and based on landmarks like the ball of the foot or the front lace or however it lines up for you, then you're gonna be set up. Anytime you go to a meet, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about, oh, are my block settings optimal? Because if you base it off your leg length, you're basing it off of the geometry of your body and that's gonna set you up to be more effective when you try to clear the blocks. Now, I'm gonna set it up how I would do it in the past where I go two steps to the first block, three steps to the second block, just so we can compare a little bit, what does that look like? We already know what it looks like when I'm in the set position here. So let's change it up, look at it from the two steps, three steps, and uh, see what that looks like. So what I notice when I go back to this old setup as opposed to the new setup that we do based off of our leg length, A, I don't feel as much pressure in the blocks, meaning I don't feel as much pressure between my foot and the block. I don't feel like I'm able to be really well seated in the blocks, I don't feel as stable, and I don't feel as balanced because the spacing between the blocks is shorter. So I don't have as much pressure on the blocks, meaning it's not. I don't feel like I'm able to produce a lot of force from this position because I'm further from the line with my front leg and it just it doesn't feel as stable so the combination of not as much pressure in the block which is going to be sort of equate to your ability to be forcefully pushing into the block that's lower and then my stability because the length between these two isn't as long that doesn't feel as good so ultimately you know I think if you go to this style of block settings where you measure your leg and you base it off that, I think you're gonna feel more pressure in the front block. You'll feel pressure in the back block as long as your hips aren't too far forward. You're gonna feel more stable and you're gonna be able to push out effectively and not have to think about it. Whereas when I'm here, because I don't have as much pressure in the block, I feel like I gotta really use my brain to generate the force. And while the back foot will come out sooner, I don't think it's going to be as forceful of a push out when I go from this position. It just doesn't feel right. Whereas when I go to the other setting based on my leg length, it feels better. The times are just as good or better. And I feel like it sets you up for a more effective acceleration because of the setup, because of the split, how much pressure you have, and the fact that you're closer to the line. If we're closer to the line, we don't have to run as far to get to the other line at the end of the track. It doesn't mean we want to put our block way up here and be in a totally funky position. But if we can slightly modify the block settings to be slightly closer to the line, then that's where I think we're gonna find the magic in our block starts. Now, as you play around with your block settings, you get them set up based on your leg length and you make little adjustments as needed to be most comfortable and get your fastest times coming out. How can you improve your block starts from there? Well, think about doing things like sled contrasts, bounding contrasts, like I talked about in one of my previous videos. If we can do block starts with a sled from block, or well, that's sort of redundant, but if we can do block starts with a sled and then pair that with block starts without the sled, that's a good stimulus to help improve your block start, improve your rate of force development and your explosiveness out of the blocks. Obviously, we wanna work on strength training, power development, things like that in the gym when we have the opportunity to based on our program setup. But I think really where we're gonna get the most out of you know, improving our block starts is A, by doing block starts, by doing you know, faster sprints, speed work, speed endurance work to get faster overall. And then contrasts between block starts and another activity, such as a med ball throw for maximum distance followed by a block start, a sled pull followed by a block start, an acceleration bound followed by a block start, an alternate leg bound followed by a block start. When we can pair exercises that emphasize something we wanna see in the start, like force production, rate of force development, switching your limbs, propelling yourself or projecting yourself down the track, if we can tune our brain with something that gets us to the outcome we want, then we can go into the block start, not have to think about it, and be able to start very effectively because we've primed our brain with that other exercise. Now from a technique standpoint, there's a couple things you wanna think about and a couple things you wanna look at. First, look at your foot contact on the first couple steps out of the blocks. Are you crashing? Is your foot crashing forward into the track as you make that first step? 
that's a sign that your torso is probably too low relative to the angle that you're able to push out at, and you should probably try to fire your torso up, extend your back, get up at a, like a 45 or 50 degree angle, and that'll allow you to attack back at the track, okay? If you're too low, your foot's gonna swing out, you're gonna crash, you're gonna break, it's not gonna be a good start. If you get a little bit higher with your torso, that makes your center of mass not so far out in front of your body, it puts it right under your body, you're gonna be able to strike back at the track where your center of mass is approximately, and that's gonna send you out down the track effectively. You know, if your arms are totally messed up when you come out of blocks, you can think of a cue like snap your front arm forward or drive your elbows or pop your elbows or something like that, create a big split between your limbs. But I wouldn't suggest really focusing on your arms unless there's something significantly, you know, up with them, messed up with them. Because I think if we, if we tune too much into our arms, sometimes that can negatively affect the legs. So I, I tend to like to let the arms just do their thing as long as they're not totally out of orbit, totally wrong, and just focus on what is our posture doing and how are we contacting the ground. Those are the two main things when it comes to sprinting. What is your posture and what does your ground contact look like? If your ground contact is crashing forward, then look at your posture. Is your posture off? If your posture is good, then maybe it's a motor control thing. Maybe you're just not comfortable attacking back at the track. Maybe it's a strength thing. Maybe your hamstrings aren't strong enough and your brain doesn't want to use them very much to attack back at the track. But if your hamstrings are strong and you have the ability from a movement you know, skill standpoint to attack back at the track, but it's still not happening, that's when I would look at your posture. Other things we want to think about are our rhythm. As we come out of the blocks, our rhythm or our frequency should increase from step to step. The first step will be a little bit uh, you know, lower stride frequency than maybe the fifth or tenth step. So you can work on that either with a, a line drill or a stick drill where you put tape down on the track at certain distances. You can put cones down. You can do wickets after a short run-in to work on the later acceleration rhythm. Um, you know, you can use a sled because that's really going to emphasize the slower rhythm first, progressing to a faster rhythm down the track. These are all things to think about when it comes to trying to improve your block starts. So once you have your block settings set up properly and you're comfortable with the setting, then you want to hone in your posture, your rhythm or your stride frequency change over time, your ground contact. And I would really you know, strongly suggest that you film yourself when you're doing block starts or any type of training and look at these things. Is your posture good? Okay, check, posture's in line. And by good posture, I mean your torso angle is not below the angle of your leg pushing out. If there's a bend, say your legs are here but your torso's here, then you're trying to be too low, that's shifting your center of mass forward and your foot's gonna crash to your center of mass, it's gonna crash forward. But if you get your torso up to the angle of your pushing leg, that's gonna allow you to attack back, send yourself up and out and accelerate effectively. So look at posture. Look at ground contact, is your foot coming down straight is it crashing forward into the track or is it coming down and back? We want to either see a down and back or at least a straight down step. We don't want to see crashing forward. If you're crashing forward, you got to fix that. Once your posture and your ground contact is good, then look at your rhythmic progression. Is your rhythm increasing? Is your stride frequency increasing throughout the sprint? Or do you go quick, quick, long, long, long? We don't want to be quick and then long. We want to go from longer to quicker throughout the sprint. Obviously, there might be some slight deviations depending on your style of sprinting, but in general, we wanna see a progression from a more forceful, projecting, stride length dominant type of movement to a more stride frequency dominant movement as we accelerate. This change will happen quickly, so I don't want you to go out and try to bound from the blocks, but you should still feel a change from step to step or from 10 meters to 20 to 30 meters that you're getting quicker as you accelerate. And as you accelerate, your stride length will increase as a, as a result of acceleration, so you don't have to really worry about that. That's something you can work on with wickets and other things. But for now, really tune in to, once again, posture, ground contact, and the progression of your rhythm or the progression of your stride frequency throughout the sprint. So if you have your blocks set up effectively based on your leg length, you have good posture, you have good ground contact mechanics, and you have a good rhythmic progression, then I think your block starts are gonna be pretty good. And over time, as you train them, as you continue to get stronger and more powerful, more elastic, your times will improve. So focus on those big things. Get the settings right, like we talked about. Get your posture right, get your, your rhythmic progression right, get ground contacts right, 
If you do all that, you're gonna have a good block start. You're not gonna have to worry about it and you're probably gonna sprint well the rest of the way. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Hopefully this gives you some idea of how you can set up your blocks effectively, what you can do to maximize the quality of your block starts and some self coaching tips that you can use for when you're out at the track or when you're back home after your track session. So you can coach yourself or your athletes. Look at these big ticket items these are the things that are going to help you become a better sprinter, improve your block starts, and have more fun when you're at practice and competing in track. So thank you guys for watching the video. I really appreciate your time. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them below. Hit that thumbs up if you like the video. Check out my website for programs, consultations, all that. And that's all I got for you guys. So this is Cody Bidlow with SprintingWorkouts.com and AthleteX, signing off.